Hello Wastelanders, it's been a long time coming, but today we fix the worthy Minutemen of Fallout 4. In a game of faction choices, Brotherhood versus Institute versus Railroad, each claiming moral superiority for the future of the Commonwealth, each dazzling with their own array of benefits and advantages, only one faction is selfless and inclusive enough not to exclude anyone willing to help or anyone who needs it, and not to force a choice on the player, the Minutemen. But being the good guys comes with few perks beyond a clean conscience, so let's change that. Wish the Minutemen's 700-year-old ruin of a home base Fort Independence didn't look like a wreck? We can have it looking good as new. Glory's going to show you around, but before she does, let me explain why she's here and how she's dressed. The Minutemen have Preston Garvey and Ronnie Shaw as their only significant named NPCs. This is fewer than any other faction. Why? To counter this, we can bring in nearly any NPC we like into the Minutemen as the player character with NPCs as looks menu presets by 5050. Even PlayStation has versions of this available. And Start Me Up Redux, an alternate start mod by Dashboardian and Odd Little Turtle. That's what I've done by recasting the Railroad's Glory, my favorite underutilized NPC, as an escaped synth who eventually leads the Minutemen. To give her an ass-kicking look to suit the Frontier Minuteman style, I turned to the Mojave Manhunter outfit by Nero and combined it with a few pieces from the Militarized Minutemen mod that we'll be seeing in this video to give Glory the desperado edge that she deserves as the poster child of an ass-kicking liberated synth. On with the tour! Thanks to Flyable Personal Vertibird by PJ Mail, the General now has Vertibird transportation and air support, a mod we have covered on the channel in our Enclave Vertibird video, and thanks to Vertibird faction paint schemes by Roast and Ghost, it looks the part. The castle itself is transformed via a combination of mods, Transfer Settlement Blueprints, CVC Wasteland, and two mods we haven't covered on the channel before, the Master Plan and Rebuild the Castle. Fort Independence is now looking better than ever. Rebuild the castle allows us to restore the castle walls and includes blueprints for many of the details you see here. Thanks to objects from CVC Wasteland and the Master Plan, some touches are my own. The frontal approach is harmless to allies and even appears to offer would-be attackers cover, but explodable cars turns that cover into a trap. Copious defenses along the completed castle walls ensure that all enemy approaches are well guarded. In fact, I eliminated almost half the turrets of the original plan because I didn't want the wall guns to do all the work for me. The castle is much more than just a defensive position, so let's take a look at the quality of life amenities it has to offer traders and Minutemen who find themselves here. Fresh produce to feed the troops and travelers is grown in the full sun greenhouse on the seaward wall, but residents of the castle don't have to rough it with just roughage. In addition to a well-stocked kitchen in the Northwest Bastion, a full-service cantina staffed by a friendly Minuteman mixologist provides commissaries and camaraderie in an atmosphere that can almost make everyone forget they are in an irradiated wasteland. Again, the combination of objects from mods CVC Wasteland and the Master Plan made many of these details possible and are linked in the video description below. From the lower veranda, we can preview some of the courtyard's features, but let's begin at the front gate, where weary travelers usually arrive at the castle for the first time. They're checked in at the guard shack. The shack contains census records, missing persons reports, and criminal records to keep visitors safe and prevent human trafficking. It is often here that Preston gets word that another settlement needs our help. So now you know. Life at the castle is a mix of mundane and heroic. Clothes dry on the line, toys wait for visiting children in a shaded sandbox, and the radio tower has accommodations for its dedicated staff while they rotate shifts around the clock to provide Minuteman updates for the masses. If you have ever wished Minutemen didn't look and fight like a bunch of poorly armed farmers, as you can see, we have it covered. While the tour continues, let's have a chat about the faction overhauls that will make Minutemen matter martially. Militarized Minutemen gives your forces a more legitimate tactical look with distinct soldier specialties and equipment like specialized backpacks, vests, scarves, patches, helmets, gloves, etc. that you can see on some of the Minutemen here. But by repurposing some vanilla assets and retaining elements like the hats, it doesn't erase the original feel of the faction. Wish that leading the Minutemen felt like growing a groundswell army the way it is supposed to be? No Minuteman overhaul would be complete without We Are The Minutemen, an overhaul mod that not only buffs faction leveled lists, curbs annoying radiant quest repetition, and improves faction classics like the flare gun, but also allows for the creation of faction settlement objects, assignable Minutemen settlers so that places like the castle can be fully staffed by faction NPCs, and Minuteman followers so that you can take a squad with you like a real general. All with an organic sense of improvement. As you level up, higher level NPCs are unlocked. 
We Are the Minutemen adds more patrols near your settlements, but if you wish the Minutemen were seeing doing what they do in even more places more often, we've got you. Improved Minutemen by Warsaw is compatible with We Are the Minutemen and makes some conservative but similar changes to faction leveled lists. We're running both mods because Improved Minutemen also adds more Minutemen random encounters with DLC factions, Minutemen fighting Nuka World Raiders, and Minutemen defending settlements against Mechanist robots, etc. Not enough for you? NPC's Travel allows you to add more Minutemen patrols and enemy faction patrols to the Commonwealth to create even more spontaneous interactions. Still not enough for you? Minutemen Watchtowers places eight abandoned Minutemen Watchtowers around the Commonwealth that your Minutemen can retake as you grow the faction back to power. A good complement to the Watchtowers are Minutemen Supply Caches, available on Bethesda, I couldn't find it on Nexus Mods, that places small supply stashes around the Commonwealth containing helpful shipments of crafting resources for you to discover from back when the Minutemen were in better shape. Since we're sending the Minutemen to fight all over the Commonwealth, they'll need more than just the bog standard laser musket to set their weaponry apart. In addition to the leveled list changes offered by the faction overhaul mods already mentioned, the attachment pack by Degenerate Dak and Pig makes extensive additions to attachment options for vanilla weapons and through leveled list integration patches brings loads of weapon diversity to factions and NPCs like the Minutemen. And Institute Technology Overhaul, adding many thoughtful new Institute weapons, has been featured on the channel in our Institute and Railroad Faction Overhaul videos, but is also a great way to supplement Minutemen weaponry through its jury-rigged Institute weapons. It makes sense that some scavenged Institute tech would have been rebuilt in a kitbash style in the hands of the Minutemen. If you want to use jury-rigged weapons on your character, they can normally only be salvaged from components found on fallen Institute NPCs by collecting Institute weapon guides from locations around the Commonwealth and must be constructed at a jury-rigged crafting station. But some of these weapons were looted off of fallen railroad agents at Bunker Hill because they are leveled list injected for the railroad. As far as vanilla weapons found in Minutemen leveled lists, as you can see, the attachment pack adds a lot of variety. For example, take a look at this modified laser musket with an automatic fire legendary trait. For some reason, automatic weapons on this playthrough suffered some kind of glitch that slowed their fire rate very significantly, and I never got to the bottom of it. This laser musket's 28 speed auto fire was made even more painfully slow by the glitch, but it was still fun to use and deadly thanks to options from the attachment pack. As far as weapons are concerned, the Minutemen artillery is a cool hallmark of the faction. Artillery? Great big guns blow up our enemies from miles away. Any of this ringing a bell? But have you ever wished you could make the Minutemen artillery grenades a bit more user-friendly? Configurable artillery has you taken care of. Control the accuracy, delay, and number of shots called in by smoke grenades with this impressive mod. And best of all, in my opinion, increase the artillery range so that you need far fewer gun emplacements around the Commonwealth. Glory, McCready, and a Minuteman follower created using We Are the Minutemen will demonstrate by calling in a strike at the Nuka World Transit Center from the Castle Artillery on the other side of the map. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, it's still coming. Are you not entertained? And while we are on the subject of bringing the Minutemen influence to the DLC content, let's look to Minutemen Take Over Nuka World. As General of the Minutemen, you can call your forces on a special radio to help you take out the Nuka World Raiders and complete open season. How much help you ask for is up to you. Glory recruited 25 Minutemen, but players can have up to 150 assist in purging the park. With the faction buffs we have in place, 25 was more than enough support, even though the raiders have a few faction buffs of their own. Let's watch some of what went down after our Minutemen assembled for the attack. Before jumping into the action, Glory needs to don her Minuteman cavalry hat and sunglasses because it looks cool. And for more style points, she'll be using the Ranger Sequoia to start things off. A big old revolver firing 4570 government rounds with a lot of knockdown power. This should be fun.
you get the idea. After it's been cleared, Minutemen will occupy Nuka Town, and if you want them to occupy the other parks, Open Season Extended 2 allows you to put a garrison of Minutemen or any other main faction in each of the parks in the same way you see them here in Dry Rock Gulch. Looking around Dry Rock Gulch gives us the opportunity to talk about how we can see Minutemen wearing outfits from both We Are the Minutemen and Militarized Minutemen. When you run both mods together, you'll get some spawning in with outfits from either mod. And the metal armor is probably from Improved Minutemen, which I really like for the sake of variety. Speaking of new looks, let's take a look at how our companions look dressed up in Minuteman fashion. Kate I left in her distinctive corset, but added a tactical vest, backpack, and helmet for some grit. Preston looks much the same as always, but his coat is blue thanks to We Are The Minutemen. Piper's road goggles look great on top of a militia hat, and a little redundant when she has the gold frame Minuteman aviators on her nose, and some explosive enhancing equipment on her backpack. McCready was always the military type and looks at home in Minuteman blues but retains his unique cap. The takeaway being that you will have many options for getting your companions into the spirit of things as Minutemen. So we've added random encounters, stat buffs, equipment buffs, buffs to flares and artillery, vertebrates, more outposts throughout the commonwealth, but what does all this look like in practice? To find out, Let's join the faction's new Super Synth General Glory as she embarks on a mission to redeem the Minutemen and scrub a black mark off their record by righting the wrongs of the previous regime. She has built a new watchtower outpost at the Murkwater construction site, thanks to the master plan, and has her sights set on driving the gunner infestation out of Quincy. Because of the deadly Commonwealth expansion adding potent leveled list buffs and named NPCs to the Quincy Gunners, they will not be pushovers. Add to that the Raiders and Super Mutants also buffed by the deadly Commonwealth expansion that lurk near Quincy and are likely to get pulled into the fight, and Glory will need the upgraded flare to signal for upgraded support, and the upgraded artillery to clear hotspots, and when her infantry and supplemental Minuteman weaponry isn't enough, she'll call in a Minuteman vertebrate from the castle for air support. It's the Commonwealth, so not surprisingly, the Brotherhood of Steel are already in the area tussling with the raiders in Quincy Quarry. This distraction gives Glory breathing room to fire a flare toward the Minutemen at Murkwater and consider her next move. Soon, the Brotherhood bird is downed and Glory decides to call her own from the castle to keep the enemies on their toes. Knowing her backup will arrive soon, Glory kicks the Quincy Hornet's nest with a grenade and gets things started. And now that all the pieces are in place, let's watch how it plays out. Black General, glad we could help.
And Glory has called in the big guns. Ah uh, yes, killed by gunner assassin Captain Haynes and his rule of thumb. Told you this wasn't going to be easy. On the next attempt, Glory decides to follow Preston's advice and help anyone who needs it by assisting the Brotherhood against the raiders in the quarry. But it doesn't take the gunners in Quincy long to bring the fight to her. As you can see, these gunners are no joke. This is a tough fight, and if you're wondering what Glory's gonna do next, she's gonna go to her default and pull out a heavy weapon. That's right, an incendiary wasteland chain gun. It's pretty fun to watch in action. This legendary gunner in T-51 looks like trouble, but in response to her upgraded We Are the Minutemen flare, it looks like two Minutemen armored dragoons in T-45 have arrived, compliments of improved Minutemen, and Preston's help anyone who needs it advice looks to have been pretty good because there's also a Brotherhood of Steel soldier still alive because we helped him marching into Quincy in his T-51. And of course the artillery flare has called in the big guns that are so explosive and bright that for a minute they dim our vision. One thing you ought to know about Minutemen is, they look out for each other. So it's time to call in our Minuteman Vertibird for a little more help from our friends. It looks like the two Minutemen traders, Clint and Tessa, have arrived and they look pretty tough, but we have a lot of backup at this point.
You know, they called them the Quincy Ruins before, but I think they're really going to deserve that name now. And thank you, Attachment Pack, for making the double barrel shotgun cool again. And that does it for the traders. But and there he is, Captain Haynes, a gunner who's killed me on more occasions than I can count. Let's hope we can take him out before he comes and gets us. Man, I hate that guy. Okay, so on try number who knows, Glory will help anyone who needs it by backing up the Brotherhood, this time against the Wilson Automatoys Super Mutants. Thanks to the Deadly Commonwealth expansion, these guys aren't easy either. With her flare gun backup arriving, Glory heads to the Quincy Gates to draw the gunners out with a grenade so she can summon some artillery hellfire down on them. Seeing the Brotherhood Vertibird taking heavy fire over Quincy, she summons her own Vertibird from the castle to keep things interesting in the air and hopes that a combination of allies and artillery will win her the day because the Minutemen traitors have to go down. And also, Captain Haynes is now definitely on her hit list.
even with so much backup, this is a hard fight, and Glory's forces are hard pressed to make any advances. Glory's Vertebrate has taken on so much fire that it's actually had to land at this point, but the pilot jumps out to help with the fight, and on they push into the Quincy Gates. You know they came to play when the gunners are showing up in X01 power armor that they somehow stole from the Enclave. Dying isn't fun, but repeating this epic fight? Not so bad. Oh, the artillery's coming. It's kind of like a solar eclipse. They say don't look directly into it, but we kind of have to. Okay, the Minutemen are officially badasses now. It's just official. You can see what I mean about my automatic weapons firing pretty slowly. I'm still not sure what was up with that. I even removed the start me up fast shot perk just in case that was messing with things and taking it off didn't seem to really change anything. And that's right, I'm passing out these artillery flares like candy on Halloween because the configurable artillery mod lets us dial the cooldown back and we can just keep using these flares if we need to. God, that really is so awesome. Seems like the fight is finally cooling down, and we haven't seen Captain Haynes at all. Maybe somebody else took him out. Maybe one of my artillery rounds? I don't know. Maybe we got that lucky. Time for the double barrel shotgun to do a little bit of sniping on this gunner cons. Oh no. Oh no, look who it is and he's not even kind of hurt. God, I hate that guy. Oh no, we're not messing around in there. We're going to get to a big wide open place where we can see him coming and take our shots at him from a distance and we are just going to wear him down. You know Glory loves a minigun, and we picked up an advanced high-speed minigun off of the Minuteman Dragoon who's laying there by the front gate. Let's let Captain Haynes absorb a few million rounds, shall we? And let's give our brave Vertibird pilot a hand. It looks like she is up on the roof of the church with a minigun and is firing down at Captain Haynes. She is my new best friend because maybe we can keep him pinned down between the two of us. Are you guys seeing this? This guy is a bullet sponge. Oh god, and he stim packs constantly too. Oh no, oh no, he's trying to close distance so he can use that melee weapon of his that's basically a one shot. Oh, we can't let him do it. Maybe it's lame for me to hang back here and try to pick him off from a distance, but you've seen what happens when we get up close. We're just... This is what's happening. This is how this is going to be. I'm starting to think there might not be enough rounds in the Commonwealth to take this guy down. This minigun is chewing through them, and he is unaffected.
You know what? If he's going to stay pinned down in that building, it's time for some explosives. Let's fire some 40 millimeter grenades at this guy with our Institute Adaptive Launcher. Ugh, and he just refuses to die. Oh man, and we earned that level up, didn't we? And now it's time to grab that sword because you can loot it off of him. Heading back into Quincy, we hear a ruckus in the distance and eventually come upon our Vertibird pilot, Ballsy Girl, trading lead with the last of the Quincy gunners. She really deserves a promotion. And it looks like one of the named NPCs is still out here, General Guthrie, who packs a thing called the Rite of Passage. It is a Gauss rifle with some insane overpowered stats. And while Piper draws his fire, we get in a position for some vats. The Ranger Sequoia takes another Minuteman Trader down, and there are a few gunners left to mop up here in Quincy, but I think all of the toughest named NPCs are out. After mopping up the gunners and finishing off the Quincy Quarry Raiders with a Brotherhood Patrol, we finally put an end to our long and hard-earned victory by hopping our Vertebrate home to the castle and chilling out on the ramparts, satisfied that the Minutemen are back and the Commonwealth will be safe in the hands of the one faction that won't put bigotry or power games before the interests of the people. Glory to the Minutemen, and thank you for watching. If you're still with me, leave a like and let me know what you thought in the comments. Later, Raiders. I'll see you in the next one.